admitted defeat and called for a meeting of creditors. Andy Stegel reports on today's developments. Meetings all morning resigned Maidstone to the inevitable and confirmed later in the day as the club's office staff headed for the dole queue, while the official statement from the board of directors made grim reading. It is with regret it said that despite every effort to financially restructure the club in order to continue playing in the Football League, the club has been unsuccessful in doing so. The creditors' meeting under the Insolvency Act of 1986 has been called for a week on Wednesday. After 22 years as chairman, it's been a bitter day for Jim Thompson. Well, it's the end uh, of an era. It's probably the end of an era for a Mason in some ways as well, I suppose. Uh, and uh, it's, it's personally a very, very sad day. So what are the financial implications of the statement today? You know, we can't talk about those. Uh, having brought the professional liquidators in, uh, we're now entirely in their control. They couldn't do anything about it from what I can understand. And one of the main culprits has got to be Maidstone Borough Council um, for refusing their uh, the ground application. I would reject that um, allegation. I think the council has given the club a lot of support. We did um, undertake a fairly lengthy search for a ground for them. At the time, the club didn't tell us that what they wanted was a very large commercial leisure complex. That grand Hollingbourne plan seems to be a past battle. Finance has seen to it that the drawings will never be reality, nor will Maystone's aspirations in the Football League. The second fourth division team to fall in three months. Andy Stegall, coast to coast, Maidstone. Maidstone spent two decades climbing towards the Football League. Morning, Chairman Jim Good Thompson morning, built a formidable club, but his ambition left their ground in ruins. Several attempts to have the stadium at London Road in Maidstone accepted by the Football League were unsuccessful. So the demolition crews moved in. The football and the fans were bussed to a new home, Watling Street in Dartford. It should have been a temporary home. Thompson was already planning a return to Maidstone. We'd hope to announce it in January, February, and we'd look to be starting in season 90, 91 on our own ground again, thank goodness. Mark Gall's prolific goal scoring helped Maidstone to the top of the Vauxhall Conference. So in 1989, the club celebrated promotion to the Football League. Ironically, the victory parade passed to their former home, now a DIY store. Maidstone won Kent's first league derby at Gillingham and reached the fourth division playoffs in that first season. The following year, manager Keith Peacock departed. He was replaced for a short and dismal time by Graham Carr. This season, interest fell away. Just 842, the league's lowest crowd for one game. Losing £1,500 a week, Thompson knew the only way his club could survive would be back in Maidstone. But last November, the town's councillors refused plans for a new stadium. At the Corn Exchange, Maidstone lost their most important fixture of the season. Promises of new financial support vanished in just six days with Mark English. And tonight, it looks as though these fans will see their club vanish as well. The people are, who it really is sad for are the people of Maidstone, uh, the wonderful supporters who uh, were there that night of November the 11th. Uh, you saw them there, uh, the young people. Uh, for them, it is a very sad day. So now it seems certain that Maidstone's days as a football league club are over. Their only hope is the emergence of a financial saviour.